Chapter 8, Superpowers by Justin Rosales. Every day after my brothers and I arrived home from school, we'd play video games. It was one of the ways that we bonded together. We especially enjoyed the games that were challenging and involved characters with, you guessed it, special abilities. The idea of having superpowers just fascinated us. Oftentimes, we would use our own imagination to pretend that we were the characters in the video games. I would assume that this is where my mother's philosophies fused with what I was doing in my spare time. If someone's able to perform superhuman feats in a video game, I thought, shouldn't we be able to do the same in reality? This idea is what started to give me some strange dreams. So at the time, there was this girl that I liked, and I was in fifth grade, and the only time I would see her was during my lunch period in the cafeteria. And in one of my dreams, I was just sitting in lunch, and I wanted to do something spectacular to impress this girl. So I stood on my seat, jumped in the air, and just began flying around. Everyone clapped and cheered. I didn't know he could fly, they said. As I landed next to the girl, she wrapped her arms around me, and I woke up. I had other strange dreams like that where I was able to move objects with my mind or was able to play back any piece of music after only listening to it once. I loved my dreams. They really inspired me. However, my parents emphasized that school was important and I needed to focus on my homework. So I resorted to living vicariously through my video game characters. A few months later, after my dreams began, my mother told me a story that she once heard over the radio. Apparently, a man froze to death after being locked inside a train with traveling cargo. As the story goes, the scientists concluded that the temperature couldn't have dropped below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 15.5 degrees Celsius, that night. Yet somehow, the man froze to death. The psychologist deduced that the man must have just panicked and simply thought himself to death. I assume this meant that his mind made him believe that it was colder than it actually was, and his body just responded accordingly. I imagined each organ slowly shutting down, as the man believed he was freezing to death. My mother told me that they found him curled up in the corner, his skin a deep shade of blue. It was a sad story, but it really got me thinking. If a man could actually think himself to death by lowering his body temperature, could he do the opposite and warm himself up in a cold climate? My mom and I spoke about it for a while, and she suggested I try it out. Just imagine yourself sitting in front of a warm fireplace, she said, or just tanning at the beach. I tried it, but honestly didn't feel any effects. So I did what any other kid would do with a short attention span at that age. I gave up on the idea. Besides, superhumans, they only existed in video games. Even though my initial attempt failed, my mother's story remained ingrained in my head. It just seemed possible to me. I couldn't figure out why I believed controlling your body's temperature was more possible than other powers, but it just stuck with me. The idea returned to me from time to time. Whenever I'd walk through winter snow, I continually thought about just how awesome it would be to be able to walk outside without a jacket, and just create my own body heat. Little did I know that one day I would meet a man who could do exactly that.